Hi, my name is Sarish Sudhakaran and in this video, we'll analyze the cinematography of Robbie Mueller. I've covered many cinematographers in the series, but Robbie Mueller stands apart because he rejected the systematic way of running a film set, specifically the Hollywood system of organizing crew and schedules. He believed it made him less creative and restricted his style. The goal of this video is to break down his different approach to cinematography and to provide a starting place to learn more about his work. In a nutshell, Robbie Miller's style can be described as being simplistic and intuitive. He preferred exploring the scene on the shooting day and depended on it for inspiration. He's an example of a cinematographer whose compositional skills were a life support system for most of the directors he worked with, and these directors operated under similar paradigms. Wim Wenders, Lars von Trier, Jim Jarmusch, Peter Bogdanovich, and others. After Mueller shot Jonathan, a vampire movie, he met Wim Wenders. Together, they have made more than 40 movies. To appreciate the cinematography of these movies, you must understand the process under which they were made. Low budgets, modest schedules, and a lot of introspection and experimentation. They were more concerned in discovering the poetry and mood of a scene than making things look pretty. This is why when you study Robbie Miller's work in isolation, you mistakenly believe there's no polish, especially when you compare his work to his peers. But when you study his compositions in context with the stories he was telling, suddenly the visuals take on a more complex meaning, with undertones and subtleties that reveal themselves to you. The last thing Robbie Miller wanted to accomplish was beautiful images for its own sake. Composition was his greatest strength. He had the knack of finding elegant and thought-provoking frames that added greatly to our understanding of the characters in that world. Probably the best example of this is Paris, Texas. Here you see Robbie Mueller's vision of a land and its citizens in a way never seen before. Even when on a budget, his camera moves were dignified and exuded sheer class. He called zoom lenses lazy filmmaking. He was happy to spend time finding the right composition with prime lenses, his favorite being Cook lenses. He didn't care much about equipment, but then again, he was a master of his tools. He carried out numerous tests on film stock before shooting, and often had to put up with substandard labs that inevitably misunderstood his intentions or were just plain inept. He loved shooting in the black and white format and didn't like shooting color to convert to black and white. In many ways, he was a purist when it came to color. He used color as a metaphor, Nobody will forget the colors of his movies having seen them. He never used colors flippantly. He never overwhelmed us with color. If you study his shots carefully, you'll see there are all sorts of color continuity errors. But who cares? It had emotional continuity, and he was keenly aware of it. He even said once the absence of color is stronger than its presence. You can't make a statement like that and get away with it if you can't deliver on your promise. He used color gels on many movies, and they lifted what might have been an average miss and scene into something extraordinary. His simplicity carried over in his lighting as well. He wasn't afraid of multiple shadows, and he mixed hard and soft lighting, never direct. For faces though, he predominantly stuck to three quarters or the paramount lighting pattern, many times broad lighting his subjects to eliminate shadows. He wasn't afraid to underlight as well. He spent considerable time lighting the long shots, and that is evident when you study them. He gave his actors a room to move and never restricted them. The contrast ratio was often pretty high when he did his best work. This changed when he worked with video. Robbie Miller would be forever remembered as one of the pioneers of shooting on low-budget video formats, most notably with the Sony PD-150 camera. He showed what such a modest camera could do in the hands of a master. We're talking DV here, not even DigiBeta. If you need a reality check on film-like cameras, and if you suffer from gear acquisition syndrome, then watch the movies he made with Lars von Trier. You will be cured. He mostly backlit his actors and exteriors, but then again, that's hardly an option when you don't have lights. To separate characters, he often used a rim light and hair light. He operated the camera most times, and he used a spot meter to get correct exposure. When he started shooting video, he transitioned to a waveform monitor to keep highlights under check. I'll always remember Robbie Miller for his interior car shots. Wim Wenders made the Traveling Man movie. It was all about going places. If you want to learn how to shoot a car scene, then study Robbie Miller's work. He has done it all, and then some. 
You'll find every composition and lighting style possible, and he had to innovate with every subsequent movie. I'll be blunt and simply say, I haven't seen better lighting and composition for car interiors, period. I hope this brief video makes you curious enough to learn more about the brilliant cinematography of Robbie Mueller. The best way to learn more about him is to watch his movies and to read some of his interviews. If there's a favorite cinematographer whose work you want analyzed, let me know. To see more videos like this one, please subscribe. There are lots more on the way. Bye now.